Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here once again to start wrapping up our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Today we're going to be talking about optimization, which is really one of the final things that you do before you ship your level to other people. We're going to learn all about the visibility engine and how to make it work for us to make our levels perform as best as they can. We'll start out by loading CSGO SDK and then Hammer World Editor. I have a basic level here. Well, it's not really a level, it's more like a hallway that has props at each end. This is nothing more than a bunch of walls, one player spawn, and prop statics, but we're going to use it to reinforce some things that I briefly mentioned on day 7 when we did basic optimization. When working with visibility optimization, we're only working with the compilers VBSP and VVIS. This means that VRAD, or the lighting compiler, does not need to be run. Let's compile this level and see how the engine thinks it should be chopped up by default without any intervention from us. When I go to run map, I'm still going to use my full compile HDR only, but I'm just going to uncheck the light command. This will make it so BSP and Viz run only, and I'll have no lighting information in my level. I'll click go and the compile will go by really quickly. Inside of game, however, we have a rather sad story of all of our brushes covered in a black haze. This is what happens in CSGO when we don't have a light environment in our level. These shadows are cast by what's called an NV Cascade Lighting Entity, and it automatically gets its settings from our light environment. No light environment means no NV Cascade Lighting settings, which results in this blackness around most of our brushes. We can continue working on our level and just get rid of this entity to have the world restored in what's called matte Fulbright 1 mode or no lighting. If we open our console, and we run the command SV cheats followed by ENT fire NV cascade light kill. This will remove that entity from our world and we can see everything fine again. Let's go into Matt wireframe one. This will allow me to see these barrels if they're being drawn through the walls. If I come down here, these barrels are in fact being rendered even though I can't see them. This is due to how visibility has defaultly chopped up my level. If I turn on Matt leaf viz one, this shows me my current viz leaf. I can already see that this viz leaf extends past this wall, which as a result will have these be rendered. If I turn on matte leaf viz 3, my potentially visible set will now be rendered in blue boxes around me. Let's hop into hammer and discuss how we can mitigate this issue of things being rendered when they shouldn't be. If we go to map and load portal file, we can see the viz leaves inside of hammer. There's a few ways that hammer will automatically chop up our level for us. As mentioned before, it's going to chop it at increments of 1024, which conveniently enough start at these teal lines. You'll notice that these are offset from the center, so they didn't get chopped on the teal line itself. However, due to the 1024 chop, we fall on this brown line, which ends up having a chop happen right here. This is all right, we don't really need to do anything about this. I'm just explaining why that chop happened right here. Otherwise, viz leaf chops will happen along brush faces. We can manually tell the engine to chop a brush face by using what's called a hint brush. To create a hint brush, we first need to select the skip texture. This is a teal looking texture that just has the word skip on it. What the skip texture does is it's completely removed during a compile. It does nothing. We want to create a skip brush that's going to end up having a 45 degree angle along this corner point here. This entire skip brush is just created as a giant block right now. It can intersect through brushes. That's not a problem. I now want to use my clipping tool and at this corner right here, I want to make a 45 degree cut. I now have this face that runs along on a 45 degree angle and chops right at this edge vertex here. I'll turn the portals off and we can see that that falls right here on this corner. I now want to open my face edit sheet and do a search for hint. This is going to be a purple texture with hint written on it. I now want to apply this only to my diagonal face. This diagonal face is being used to split a viz leaf. Skip is used on all sides that we do not want to split a viz leaf, while hint is used on just one face. One thing to note, if this brush is not perfectly lined up with this corner here, you will not receive the benefits from manually placing this hint brush. Even if this is only one unit up, or even half a unit up, you will not get the benefit. It needs to be perfectly aligned which is why when I used my clipping tool, 
to cut the cube into essentially a triangle, I put my first vertex point right here, and then the second one was on the next grid point that I had snapped to. So it would guarantee that this will fall along this corner point. Let's compile this level now and see what this hint brush has done for us. So we're back inside a game. Let's turn on Matt Leaf Viz 3. We can now see that there's a giant diagonal cut along this angle here. While I'm standing right here, both sets of barrels are rendered, and this is accurate because this is what I can see. As I cross this border here, these boxes will disappear because those are no longer in my potentially visible set. From the viz leaf that I'm in right now, it's impossible that I could see this viz leaf right here, which is why we manually place hint and skip. If I turn wireframe on, these barrels right here just disappear because I can no longer see them. You will notice that some brushes will still be rendered even though we can't see them. This is completely normal, but brushes are obscenely cheap to draw. One of these barrels has more polygons in it than all of the brushes in this level combined right now. So it does not matter that a few more polygons from the brushes are being drawn even though we can't see them. The important thing is that the props are not being rendered when I cannot see them. The same thing will happen with this set here. Another common issue that we'll run into is a U-bend in our level. If I turn off my L-bend and turn on my U-bend level, while this current hint brush will in fact optimize this level without a problem, there is another better way that we can do it. If we create a skip brush that runs parallel to this face here, and then just throw hint on it, this will essentially do the exact same thing. If I compile this now, Looking at this level in game, we can clearly see that it makes sense for me to see both groups of barrels. As I go over here though, they're still rendered. As I cross this line here, those barrels are no longer in my PVS or potentially visible set and as a result they're no longer rendered. While this one hint brush does work alright, one thing to know is that hint brushes are the cheapest, most efficient way to optimize your level in the Source Engine. You can have many of them, and although it can get confusing and a little involved to keep creating them throughout your world, you should do so. If this was my level, I'd end up creating two more hint brushes. They would both be diagonal cuts along this corner here. All I have to do is make the one and then rotate the other, and this will provide slightly better performance in the level. Let's compile that and see the difference it made. While standing right here, both groups of barrels are still rendered. But as soon as I cross this diagonal line, this group of barrels has disappeared because it's not my potentially visible set anymore. Before, I had to get to right here for them to disappear. Using the diagonal hint brushes is a great way to optimize your level. While I'm doing this in a test environment, not all situations will work out this elegantly. Now we're in DE Metro and I'll take you through my workflow that I use to make a level optimized. This level has changed some since you've last seen it. The first step in optimizing the level is head over to your viz groups and turn off the auto checkbox. We don't want to see anything that is a world detail or entity. Turn on world geometry and then you can turn off the tool brushes. With only the world geometry checked, this means that world brushes will be shown things that are splitting viz leaves. We want to run through our level and make sure that only basic geometry is being drawn right now. This means that things that can't block our view aren't being rendered. Stuff like these support beams here should be funk detail. I'm doing a fly through now to make sure that everything that should be a funk detail in my level is a funk detail. I'm looking for things like staircases. This desk can't block player visibility. And then after I detail a few things, I want to turn off the Funk Detail checkbox under my auto viz groups. Plenty of things in B site shouldn't be splitting viz leaves, mostly these support beams. So all of these should be turned into a function detail. These escalators also should be function detail. Now that I'm done finding all the funk details that I missed just while brushing out the level, I'll go ahead and turn everything on in auto. This will bring the entire world back into existence. Now I'll run a compile, and I just want to gauge how long this is taking. This is also the first check for leaks in our level. Since we've changed things to funk detail, 
we might have exposed part of our level to the void and will result in a leak. If we go to map and load point file, we can see where that leak is being generated from. We can just go ahead and fix it. Once that leak is patched, we'll turn everything back on and then run another compile. You may need to do this a few times to find all of the leaks. It's completely normal that while you're optimizing, you constantly create leaks that you just have to fix. After it looks like we have all of our leaks fixed, we can unload our point file. And let's just check how many num portals we have. This number may be higher for you, but do remember that when it comes to num portals, lower is objectively better. You want to keep this under about 4,000, as once we start adding hint and skips, this number will increase since we're splitting viz leaves. We want to fly around and make sure that parts of the world that we can't see as a player are no drawn. Assuming you were creating your level with the no draw texture and texturing only faces that could be seen, this should be a pretty quick fly through and you won't have to spend a lot of time on it. If you miss one or two faces, it's not the end of the world. Just try to do the best you can as it will help a small amount per face that you no draw. The next form of optimization that I like to perform on my level is prop fade distance. Prop fade distance allows you to set a start and end distance for when the prop will start to transition out of and into rendering in your level. You won't want to do this on larger props and it's pretty much just for props that don't matter a lot for cover. Props over here in my park, I probably would not set a fade distance on. Due to the fact that they can be seen from all the way over here on CT side mid, I don't want them popping in and out of existence. Their rendering will almost exclusively be handled by area portals, which we'll cover later, and hint and skip. However, down in the metro, there are some trash bins that we don't need to be rendered all the time. This one in particular can only be seen from over here and if you're behind the train car over here. The easiest way to set the fade distance is to open its object properties and then locate start fade distance slash pixels. I like to position my camera at the furthest point away from the prop that it will still be seen and then click the camera on my start fade distance. When I click apply, it will put the sphere around the prop signifying that this is the start fade distance. I also have that in my 2D views as well. I'll then go to my end fade distance and set the same value plus about 50. This will create a second circle and the distance between the two is a fade out. You'll want to know that while a prop is fading into or out of existence, this costs more to render than the regular prop itself. It can also look quite weird as some props don't render perfectly when they're fading out. This will lead you to have a tighter fade distance on most props just for a performance reason. I like to use about 50 so that way the transition distance isn't an instant snap in and it's still a rather quick fade out. Some props that you'll want to set a fade out on rather harshly are multiplayer props that don't matter. Here are two physics trash bins and if I select them and then go to start fade distance, I'll just set this to 900 and then it's end fade distance to 950. Since these could end up anywhere in the level by the time the round is over, I can't genuinely set a fade distance on them that I know will work for every situation. In this case, the prop may be seen fading in or out. Let's compile with these fade distances set so we can see how they affect the props in game. Here we are in game and this is the trash can that has fade distance on it down in the metro. Although this is about the farthest I can get away from it, we don't really see it start to fade out until we get in this deep corner here. And then it just barely starts to fade out. If I no clip past its range, it pops in and out of existence pretty quick. You'll want to set fade distance on props that are off to the side and aren't used for cover. You'll also need to make compromises on certain debris or trash models as those can impact performance and not having those always drawn can be very helpful. Over here in B-Site is an example of that. I have my two little paint bins and they work fine once I'm up to them, but some players will push these all across the level in order to find some watermelon-like secret. But once we get far enough away from them, we can see that they will fade out of existence. 
but we're so far away from it that it doesn't actually matter if it's rendered or not. I hope you enjoyed this first look of adding optimization into our level. We're not quite done yet. Join us tomorrow when we finish adding hint, skip, area portals, and wall hacks into our level.